A rock is dropped from a sea cliff and the sound is heard 3.2 seconds later. If the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, how high is the cliff? So here we have a diagram of a rock drawn in black, dropped down to the water. When the ro uh, rock hits the water, it creates a splash and the sound travels upward to where the, the rock was dropped initially. The first thing we need to do is we need to decide what is the direction um, of travel. So we're going to make the direction for this problem, uh, the downward direction is going to be negative. And the negative, um, the rock is falling in the negative direction and then the sound is moving upward in the positive direction. Always set the direction, one set of direction for the entire problem. So the first thing we can state is that the, uh, the time for the rock to fall plus the time for the sound to travel back up is equal to 3.2 seconds. We can also say that the displacement of the rock is going to be equal to the negative displacement of the sound. Now it's negative because the sound is traveling in the opposite direction of the rock. They're both traveling the same distance but as far as the kinematic formulas are concerned, uh, kinematic formulas do not include distance, they include displacement. So it's important that you make this statement right here. So let's begin with the rock. Let's write down all the information we know for the rock. Well, we know the displacement of the rock is equal to the negative displacement of the sound. The time the rock falls, we don't know that. The initial speed of the rock is equal to the um, to zero. And the final velocity of the rock, we don't know that yet. Uh, and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The rock is speeding up as it falls. So let's put a box around this, just to make sure that our work is neat. And let's come up with a formula that describes the motion of the rock. So if you look at the list of information that you have, um, we, we have this, we have that. And I'm interested in relating the movement of the rock to the um, movement of the sound, so we're going to want an equation that has x in it, v non in it, and a. And since we do have some information about the time of the rock, we know the time of the rock is going to be equal to 3.2 seconds minus the time of the sound. We should use those four variables, and we'll leave that variable out. So that means we're going to use the equation x is equal to v naught t plus one-half a t squared. And uh, since there is no initial velocity, we can drop that immediately. And that means that x is equal to one-half times negative 9.8 and times t rock squared. Now, I'm not going to... Uh, substitute the TR. I'm going to leave it as is um, because I, I don't want to substitute something into a square. That's going to be uh, some complicated math. Uh, I'm going to leave that open for now. So that means that X is equal to negative 4.9 TR squared. And my approach here is I want to try to figure out uh, what TR is. And if I figure that out, then what I could do is I can calculate what uh, X is. So that's my approach in solving this problem. So I'm going to leave that formula for now. And now I'm going to explore the motion of the sound. 
so the motion of the sound, let's do that over here. Sound, and we'll do the same thing. X sound, T sound, initial speed, final speed, and A. Now we know that uh, that's going to be negative X R, and, uh, moving in the opposite direction. That we don't know what T S is, but we do know that T S is 3.2. So TS is going to be 3.2 minus the time the rock falls. Uh, the initial speed and final speed of the sound is 340 meters per second because sound travels at a constant speed. So that means the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, so let's uh, write an equation that summarizes the movement of the sound. Since the sound travels at a constant speed, we can use this equation. And uh, what I'm going to do is rearrange this. Uh, this will be, this will read XS is equal to 340 um, time of the sound and excess will be equal to 340 times 3.2 minus the time that the rock falls. So if I distribute that, we'll get 1088 minus 340 TR. So I have uh, two equations, this one here and this one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them equal to one another and finish the problem in this region. Um, I do know that uh, I'll restate that XR is equal to negative XS. Um, I have XR here. So that's negative 4.9 TR squared and that's equal to um, 1088. Have to put a negative in here, negative 1088 minus 340 TR. Let's not lose that negative. And uh, so uh, rearrange this, it's uh, a quadratic. So it's negative 4.9. TR squared um, minus 340 TR plus 1088 is equal to zero. So our um, values for a quadratic equation are negative 4.9, negative 340, and positive 1088. So we'll do the quadratic and the quadratic gives us two answers. It says TR is equal to 3.06 seconds or negative 72 seconds. Now we know that the negative 72 is not possible, so the answer must be 3.06 seconds. So now what we can do is we can uh, take our equation, uh, since, since we figured out uh, what TR is, um, we can uh, take the equation for the distance, XR, and apply and, and substitute the time into that. So we'll have XR is equal to negative 4.9 times 3.06 squared. And that will work out to negative 46 uh, meters. 
So that's the displacement of the rock. The rock falls 46 meters. So that means that the height of the cliff will be equal to 46 meters. 